So today I'll be filming some upgrades on my Lenovo ThinkPad T530 laptop. Um, and they're all over here. There's already an SSD installed in the 2.5 inch bay. Um, I'm actually all out of mSATA solid state drives, which I was thinking about installing, which I'll show you where the port is right underneath the keyboard later. Um, but in the meantime, there's, I'm pretty sure there's a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. So I might actually upgrade that to a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. So that's the max capacity I have right now. And this is a 1080p, uh, this is a 1920 by 1080 display panel, which I'll be installing uh, to replace the 1366 by 768. I have 16 gigabytes of TimeTech RAM, premium memory, as described on the label. Um, so those are two eight gigabyte sticks. I've used TimeTech before. Uh, mainly in desktops, and I've found the performance to be pretty good. And I'll be upgrading the i5-3320M CPU to a i7-3610QM CPU, which is four cores, eight threads, as opposed to the two core, four thread i5 version that's currently installed. So I think what we'll try first is installing the 1080 panel and hopefully we won't run into any issues. So we'll start by taking the battery out. And I believe all we need to do is remove the uh, front bezel on the current display panel. And you can do that just by using your fingers, by pulling up gently. You can also use maybe a plastic guitar pick, but Looks like this is coming off really easy, so I'm just going to continue with my hands. Okay, so before you go to remove this front bezel, there's one, two, and three places to remove a screw. So I'm going to try really hard, and you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm going to try to take these stickers off without damaging them too much, because otherwise It'll leave the uh, screw head exposed, and I don't mind that too much myself. Looks like this one's coming off pretty easy. So having the screw exposed, try to get a good view of that. There it is. So it's not so bad as compared as compared to the uh, little sticker, but. If we can avoid, oh, this one I kind of damaged a little bit, but it's not looking too bad. And the third one over here. Okay, these came off pretty easy. Now I'll take the Phillips head screwdriver, take those screws out. So to remove the panel, we have to detach it from the hinges. And we have one screw here, one screw here, and probably one or two along the side to take out, which we might need a smaller bit for. Start with these two. All right, so I'm getting a little bit of resistance right here on the hinge. So right here, I'm gonna take this screw out and maybe that will, yeah, it looks like it's loosening things up a little bit. That way I'm not prying up and feeling like I'm wrecking something because there is a screw way over here. We need to get out. There we go, that's easily accessible. Same thing on the other side. All right, now the panel should just lift out and you should be able to disconnect from the rear. I'm just gonna lay this microfiber cloth down here so I don't damage the front. Okay, let's take a look. 
Yeah, there it is. Ooh, that's bright. Okay, so you want to be somewhat gentle here. It looks like we have a piece of tape holding down, which you want to take off. All right, I was being extra gentle because I didn't want to yank off that cable. You're gonna find that there is an adhesive on the bottom side, so you wanna pry up gentle so you don't destroy the panel um, because there's only slight damage to this one. And I'll probably sell it at a big discount just in case somebody's looking for one. Now this is all assuming that this will work okay. So I'm gonna take this out of the package and get to installing. All right, so just because um, some of the adhesive is not quite as strong as it once was, I'm gonna put a small strip of electrical tape on the back just for some extra security. All right, hey, success. Um, looks like the panel's working. Looks like I also have Fast Startup activated, so I'm gonna have to boot into Windows. And hey, at least we'll get a quick uh, sneak preview of what this thing looks like. See if there's any dead pixels or anything. Uh, no, it actually looks quite nice. So definitely get a better viewing angle once I put this thing all together. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to shut it down and we'll get to uh, finishing up the install, but hey, I'm pretty happy that it's working so far and it does look really nice compared to the 1366 by 768 display. All right, so now it's time to replace the CPU. And I don't quite recall how to access it properly, so we're just going to start by taking the keyboard off and we'll see where we get, because I think we have to do that anyway. Um, I think we have to remove the palm rest as well, so I'm going to take the SSD out. Oh, looks like we have a hard drive installed. Um, so that makes me think that we probably have an MSATA SSD installed underneath the keyboard, which is kind of cool. So we'll probably end up installing a second solid state drive in there. All right, so take out this one and this one right here, these two screws to remove the keyboard. We'll go from there. Yeah, there we go. We do have an MSATA solid state drive installed right here. So, you know what, I'm gonna keep that installed as the Windows boot drive. So the MSATA SSD does, I'm gonna remove this RAM stick. Uh, it runs at SATA 2 speeds, which is uh, not as good as SATA 3, obviously, but um, in my experience, it does work well enough as um, a Windows boot drive, and we're just going to keep it that way anyway, so I'll probably end up installing a Windows 11 into this, and we'll give it some test runs, and if it's really... I, I expect it'll be fi totally fine, but in the event it's not, you can always just use the 2.5-inch uh, drive bay for an SSD, and that will run at SATA 3 speeds. So... Um, yeah, let's get this palm rest removed because it looks like the CPU is right here. So we just need to... I think we need to take some screws out from the bottom. And so... There's already a screw taken out in the hard drive bay. Um, if there isn't, we'll have to take that one out. And there's one over here underneath the battery. A small screw. 
And then there's just uh, take a look around. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, eight screws here total. There's a couple missing from this one, or <clears throat> just we're never in in the first place. Whatever the case is, we'll just take those out. Okay, looks like we're good to start taking off the palm rest. Um, so there's one ribbon cable right here, which I believe connects to the touchpad. And we just need to, there's a little, it'll be black or white. Um, and you just need to lift it up. And then you can take this ribbon cable out. And it doesn't look like there's any other screws holding this thing in place, so I'm just gonna gently lift up. Uh, be careful, cause I have damaged this release once in a while, or one, more than once, or at least once, I should say. So I have another tool I'm gonna use right over here. All right, so now we have access to the um, CPU. So it looks like, well, we'll see. We might have to remove that fan and we might have to move the speaker too because it's on top of the heat pipe right here, the copper heat pipe. I'm gonna take the speaker off because it looks like it's pretty easy. There's just one screw here, one screw there. And we'll take off the screws for the heat sink. So here's what the CPU looks like. Very nice. So it would help to have a flathead screwdriver or something like this. So you can release the lock on the CPU. Um, there we go. Turn it all the way over. So the little tab is facing this way. Just like a uh, current um, AMD desktop CPUs where the pins are on the CPU itself. I'll set that off to the side and may as well put in the i7 right now. Okay, so you wanna just line up, just like on a desktop, I'm gonna line up the CPU with a little arrow, and it looks like it's identified right here on the CPU socket itself right here. You can see the little arrow, and that indicates that is where, um, that's the direction the CPU needs to set. Now I'm going to scrape off this old thermal compound, um, put on some new uh, Arctic MX-4 thermal compound. First thing I'm going to clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol as well. All right, so I blew some dust out of this. There really wasn't much, if any, of a dust buildup, so that's convenient. I don't need to take the entire thing apart just for cleaning. Um, so let's put some thermal compound on the new CPU.
I'm going to put the palm rest back on, put one ram stick in there, um, and we'll do a boot test. All right, so everything is put back together and this thing is running really well. Uh, it's super snappy, it's fast. I mean that uh, quad core CPU, it's definitely more than novelty. I have a feeling it will perform well, um, as well as the 16 gigs of RAM. It's looking good. And I installed a 512 gigabyte King Fast solid state drive and the 2.5 inch drive bay, and we have the 128 gigabyte Samsung PM851M SATA solid state drive as the Windows boot drive. Uh, so what I think I'll do is take some time to install Windows 11, and we'll just see what it looks like and how it runs, and we'll leave it from there. All right, we got Windows 11 up and running, and I have to say, it's running really smooth. Uh, responsiveness is very fast. I haven't done a whole lot except kind of a marvel at it, I suppose. Um, just because uh, temporary satisfaction in installing the upgrades, I suppose. But uh, yeah, the CPU and RAM combo uh, with his 1080 display like makes for a really cool experience and it goes super fast uh so i'm pretty happy about it so let's get to trying out a couple games all right so i have my gaming or my games ssd that i use for testing systems linked up to my t530 here and i'm gonna try out left for dead 2 first All right, to start off with this opening scene, we're averaging 100 to 90 frames per second, down to 70. So let's just see how this game's. I have a feeling it will be totally fine. All right, with gameplay here, we're going anywhere from a low of like 65 frames per second to high of 90, 95 frames per second. To be honest, I didn't expect uh, much, anything less or uh, less or more. Uh, definitely a good experience though. All right, so I'm trying out Tomb Raider 2013 on 1080p resolution on low graphics settings. And this is a fairly like a uh, like there's a lot going on in one of these last scenes and it looks like I'm averaging around 20 frames per second dipping down to 15 16 13 all right so I toned it down to 1366 by 768 resolution and it plays a lot smoother I'm averaging around 39 40 frames per second and I think that's good enough to play this game. Um, and it's too bad that I can't use the uh, 1080 resolution, but it's kind of understandable with a game like this running on Intel HD 4000 graphics, so it is what it is. Um, as long as it's playable, it's not so bad. And it honestly still looks pretty good on this display. All right, just for the heck of it, I loaded up Dark Forces and um, this is just meant to demonstrate that you can play uh, tons of older games on the system too. And obviously it doesn't take much to play a game like this. Uh, however, it is still a lot of fun. Um, so just a quick example of a, you know, gaming is not hopeless on a older laptop like this. All right, so I thought I'd give uh, Counter-Strike a try. And this is just to demonstrate that 
So I have it running at 1600 by 900 resolution and windowed as well with some of the uh, graphics settings set to lower. Oh, I just died. Anyway, that's just to demonstrate that you can still play a variety of different games as, as long as you're willing to manage your expectations and um, put up with a slightly smaller game display. All right, so I'm going to wrap up this video. One thing I will point out, um, I don't know if you've noticed if you made it this far or if you've been watching the video at all, but the touchpad on this is pretty worn out. And I do want to replace that. Um, I do have stickers coming in, but well, they're just taking a while and I'm not too sure exactly when they'll reach me. So I can't film myself doing that, but it's a fairly easy process. If you do that yourself, you can use something like a, a heat gun and melt the adhesive for the sticker, peel it off and put the new one back on. I've done it many times myself for other units and it, definitely solves the problem of a worn um, touchpad on the T530. So, so I'm going to wrap this video up. So thanks a lot for watching and hopefully it helped you out in some way.